So we're all under a little bit of pressure. Um, some of us more than others. I'm presumably under a little more pressure up here. Um, if you've ever been to the, the doctor, and I think probably everybody listening has been, uh, your pressure has been measured, you know, how, what, you, what your internal pressure is. And as you can see on the screen, um, your, your blood pressure was probably measured with a, a blood pressure cuff that looks something like this. So where does blood pressure come from? Um, it's the, the force, the, the pressure of the blood pumping through your body, pressing on your artery. What is measured is a function of the stiffness of the artery, uh, the, the, your age, your, your physical condition, whether or not you're giving a talk to an audience of hundreds, um, whether you're relaxed in the back of the room or hopefully tweeting. Um, but blood pressure has been used for, for a long time, and, and one of the reasons that it's, it's, it's a biomarker that doctors like is that they have a lot of data on it, and there's a lot of history in terms of what it means to have a, a normal blood pressure or an abnormal blood pressure. But it's actually kind of complicated to get. Um, you have this blood pressure cuff. Um, you can do that in the home. You can do that at the doctor. Um, I have a vision where we make it a little bit easier. But how do we make it easier? Um, if you were to take your, your fingers and put them next to your esophagus, either on the left or the right of your, of your neck, uh, if you sort of stop talking for a second, you can feel your pulse. And if your fingers were very, very sensitive, I argue that your fingers could actually tell you your blood pressure. So if you sort of pressed a little bit on your neck or relaxed a little bit on your neck, how your, your blood pressure, how that stiffness of your neck felt as you were pressing on it might tell you something about what your, bread, your blood pressure actually was. So what you're seeing on the screen is an exploration of, of the act of deforming tissue. So your body, is, there's bones inside, but most of it's the soft tissue that you deform. And tissue deforms from the blood pumping through it, so internal pressure making the tissue deform. And you can deform your tissue by applying external pressure, by pressing on your body. What you're looking at here is an ultrasound probe, uh, analogous to what you'd find at MGH or uh, Beth Israel Hospital or any hospital around the world. Um, and there's an ultrasound image of, in this case, the brachial artery. Um, but we've measured the amount of force that is being applied during the image acquisition. So it's an ultrasound probe. What you're seeing in this blue uh, frame around the ultrasound probe is a 3D printed clamshell that attaches to the outside of the probe. And inside of that clamshell is a force sensor that allows us to measure how hard we're pressing, how hard we're trying to deform the tissue from the outside of the body while the blood pressure is pushing on the inside. And you can see when you apply just a little bit of force, I would normally point with a laser pointer, but I guess the image on the, the left, uh, far left, uh, where we're applying one newton of force, the, the artery, the brachial artery in this case, is not very deformed. As we increase the force a little bit more up to five newtons, the artery is getting a little more, a little more compressed. So this is an observation. How do we use this now? So, and this notion that we can sort of feel our pulse to get to a vision where we can potentially just measure our blood pressure, we get up in the morning when we're shaving. I have a lot of experience with shaving, maybe not the face, but certainly my head, um, or applying makeup. So I have a vision where we want to just take a device that sort of comfortably fits into the palm of your hand. You just touch it to your neck, and in five seconds, I have a measure of blood pressure. So how do we do that? So a little bit of an anatomy lesson first. So this is the, on the top, we're seeing the carotid artery. Uh, around the carotid artery, we see the esophagus, we see the, the vertebrae. Um, and then in the bottom image, we see an ultrasound probe that's been used to acquire a, a cross-sectional slice of that anatomy. In the center, you see the carotid, you see the esophagus, where it's the, the shadow in the, the right half of the image, and you see the vertebrae um, sort of deep below on the back side of, of the artery. So what we're looking at in this video sequence is a application of an ultrasound probe slightly resting on the carotid artery where the patient or a caregiver is just modulating the amount of external pressure that's being applied. And so you can see that in the video by the, the distance between the surface of the skin and say the musculature to the left of the artery getting slower or getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we're steadily increasing the amount of pressure that's applied from the outside of the body. At the same time, you're seeing the pulsating of the artery from the inside of the body. You're seeing this pulsation of, of, the, of the blood pressure pumping through the carotid artery. 
So we were to take that video um, and of that, that sequence of ultrasound imagery and, and select a few frames of it, we see sort of a, a, a low, a medium, and a high level of force from the left to the right of the frame. And the plot that we're seeing in the bottom of the screen is, a, is the diameter of the minor axis of the artery. So it's the, the distance from the top to the bottom of the artery as we're slowly increasing our force. So as you would expect, if, if we didn't have any blood pressure and we just had this tube filled with fluid, we press it, press it, press it, we get narrow, 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 and you're seeing that general trend of decreasing. And, but you're seeing the internal pressure of the, of the blood pulsating the artery bigger, bigger, bigger as we go. So those three frames that we're seeing correspond to those three peaks. And so this is the data that we can use to try to start to understand if our fingers were sensitive enough and could measure the diameter. How do we do that? I'm not sure yet. Uh, they can measure the diameter of the, of the artery, and maybe we could get something about blood pressure, this changing diameter. And this changing diameter is impacted by how we're pressing from the outside and how blood is pressing on the inside. Okay. So this is what we do. Um, so to try to answer this question, we started collecting a bunch of data at, at Mass General Hospital and a couple of clinical trials. Um, used a conventionally, a commercially available uh, ultrasound probe. And again, on the outside of this probe, we mounted a, a force sensor that measures how hard we're pressing the probe against the body. And then used that to acquire really two pieces of data. The, the bottom video, or the video, is again the sequence of acquiring the ultrasound imagery across the carotid, and you see the force is being increased, and you see the pulsation of the carotid from the internal force. And the, the plot on the bottom right is the force that we applied during the imaging process, how hard we've pushed on the outside of the body as we're acquiring this imagery. Uh, I'll just point out there's this, these three little peaks at the beginning of the force sequence, and that's just to allow us to synchronize the data. So the, our, our ability to measure force and our ability to acquire this ultrasound data, they're not tied together, two separate systems, so that we can align the data. We do this pulse, 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 so that we can synchronize and then slowly ramp up our force and acquire that force data and its imagery data. There you go. So we have this data set now, and we really solved this, this massive computational problem um, which, as it turns out, with enough work and a doctoral student working on it for five years can get it to the point where this massive computation runs in real time. Um, but as input, we use this ultrasound data as a function of known applied force. So at the top of this, the input is image, 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 and each image has an applied force associated with it. Now we model the tissue. We model the carotid artery. We model the bone as a, as a slab of tissue um, with a, an artery or a pressure vessel that has a certain diameter that we don't know. It has an internal pressure that we don't know. We don't know the properties of the tissue. So we use this complete observed data set of, of applied pressure and what the ultrasound imagery is giving us. And from the ultrasound imagery, we can see how the tissue is deforming. And we iteratively solve this very large model, this, this numerical model using what's called finite element modeling. But it's a sort of a network of little springs and masses connected together to simulate what tissue actually is. And out of that model, we estimate a large number of things. We estimate, well, what is the actual average tissue stiffness? What is the average stiffness of the artery? What is the diameter of the artery? And most importantly, what is the internal pressure of the artery? So, we just published a paper earlier this year. This is sort of hot off the presses uh, uh, work that's happening in my group. Um, this was uh, sort of our first uh, clinical trial on, on 24 single visit volunteers. The ground truth that we can compare our measurement to is the blood pressure cuff. Uh, our our uh, accuracy here compared to the blood pressure cuff on both systolic and diastolic is about 7% and 9%, which is actually very, very good because the blood pressure cuff itself is only good to about 10%. Um, so we don't know whether the error is in the cuff or the error is in our measurement. But also, the other thing that gives us a lot of uh, extreme confidence, there we go, is now following an individual 
over a long period of time. So this is a, another volunteer. This is a, actually a hypertensive, medicated hypertensive volunteer um, who came into the lab uh, seven visits over a one-month period. And um, this individual came in right after being medicated, right after taking the medication, um, and that tends to drop the blood pressure. And then we tracked over a period of time as the medication sort of works through the system and blood pressure increases until it gets to the end of the month where there'd probably be another dose to be required. But what we're seeing is very, very good tracking agreement for the individual on a measure of blood pressure from the blood pressure cuff and from our technique of taking a little handheld device that almost looks like an ultrasound probe and just getting an image of the carotid artery and applying a little bit of load. So ultimately, we want to try to enable um, at the bedside, at the, at the vanity, while you're shaving or applying makeup. You know, instead of just shaving, pick up this device, touch it, get a measure of blood pressure. And that gives you far more frequent measurements. So we don't really understand, in the context of daily living, how our blood pressure varies. You know, if you want to get your blood pressure now, you typically have to get the cuff out. Um, so this would give us a, a way to more far more frequently get our, our underlying physiological data, and that could teach us a lot about the physiology, about our normal variation. But ultimately, the direction that we're going is how do we now use this to enable a, a blood pressure patch? And I'm gonna leave this as the teaser, because this is something we're, we're working on now. And to do this blood pressure patch, I argue you need three things. You need an approach, an algorithm, a, a way to make this measurement. And that's what we've demonstrated with sort of this handheld device, a way to acquire data, uh, that's uh, ultrasound and force, and to process that data and give a very strong estimate of the internal pressure, our blood pressure. But then you also need a, a, a way to make this a, a thing that you wear, and then you also need a manufacturing process. So I'll leave that as a, as a teaser for maybe for next year. Um, and our ongoing work um, is miniaturizing these devices, getting more uh, data on other hypertensive patients, um, there's a lot of application in other areas where pressure may be interesting. So blood pressure is certainly one, arterial pressure, but venous pressure is another area. Um, and with that, uh, thank you for listening.